me that you're here. My name is Sia. I was in New Orleans, so this is actually a picture of me costuming on Mardi Gras because I like to make my own costumes and it was a lot of fun. But um, now I'm in Durham, North Carolina, and you can find more about me on Sia.codes, and that's also where all the articles I'm going to mention are at because I've actually written up articles on these things, so um, you can follow tutorials in detail. I am the Green Greek on Twitter as well, and I'm pretty active on there. So if you have questions, feel free to like at me or DM me, and I will try to answer them for you. I am a freelance web developer, full stack, though I like the front end, and I do a lot of web performance. So for sites too slow, I can help you make them faster. <laughs> and I also teach workshops on that topic as well. So the slides are actually... <laughs> in one of my articles, so you don't even have to write all that down. If you just go to sia.code slash post, you'll be able to find them. And there's recordings of different versions of this talk that I've given for different meetups. And before we get started, I want to do a little show and tell so you know what I'm actually talking about. So I'm going to go to this post that I have on my website. And it's about architecting data on 11D. And if I go down to the bottom of the article, you will see I have this section called web mentions and I have 60 likes, 15 retweets, and a bunch of replies. And <laughs> Raymond, you're in here. <laughs> um, and all of these are, 99% of them are actually come from Twitter. So they're like Twitter responses to a post when I announced this article. So I'm gonna talk about how that all works, and I'll also talk about 11 e which is what I use for my website. It's like fun, I love building in it, that's why I like doing talks with it. And um, I'll also talk about how I all architect it all together. I use Netlify, GitHub Actions, and some fun stuff. So if we have time at the end and there's like some weird part you wanna dive down more into, I, wish I can show you that as well. So what are web mentions? Web mentions enable one website, address, or URL, to notify another website that the former contains a reference to the latter. So it's a way to have social interactions without using like one particular um, social network, for example. Another way to think of that is when you link to one website, you can send it a web mention to notify it. If it supports web mentions, then that website can display your post as a like, retweet, or um, I guess reply, comment and you're having a conversation directly between websites without a middleman. And that is a quote from IndieWeb.org. So let's talk about what IndieWeb means. IndieWeb is a people-focused alternative to the corporate web. And the principles include owning your own domain, owning your own content and data, and you can optionally syndicate elsewhere. For example, I will write posts on my website, but then I wait a little bit of time, and this is like for SEO reasons, and then I will repost them on dev.2, and then you can set canonical links there that actually point to your site as being the canonical URL or the source of truth for this post so that you get credit for it, or you don't get penalized in terms of SEO. Um, and you can connect with everyone using web mentions. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention another benefit of syndication is like, you know, what if that publication goes down? You still have that content that you wrote because you put effort into that, right? So we don't want to lose that when companies come and go. But we also don't want to lose that ability to connect with other people. So that's why web mentions are cool. So how does it all work, just the web mentions part? Will you sign up for... A WebMention.io, which is a service um, that allows you, it basically has a set of APIs for you to collect and send web mentions. And once you sign up for it, you get a unique link for your domain. And then you just put these two links in the head of your website, and it will start collecting web mentions and pingbacks on your behalf. And for the most part, these are web mentions. Pingbacks are an older, um, an older version essentially, of sending this type of communication. So what does it look like when you want to send a web mention? Well, if you're into curls, uh, you can see here that we send it as a post request to the web mention endpoint, and we include the source, which is the URL that you're coming from, and the target is the post that you're replying to. Now, most of us don't send curls when we're, you know, developing websites. 
we actually put it in the form of a form. And so if it's a form, this is what that would look like. The action is the web mention API route, and the method is post. We have our input, with the, which is a source. And actually, let me just show you. This is literally, I have a little form at the bottom. So you can manually send a web mention right here. So you put a URL with your website, and you click Send Web Mention, and that's this form. So the URL is your website, and then I have a hidden input that tells the target website, which is my own URL for that particular post. But um, most people don't interact directly with web mentions at the moment. So there's a way you can pull in uh, social interactions from other systems, and one of them is through this tool called Bridgie. And actually, Bridgie has been updated and now includes Facebook as well. I actually deleted my account, but <laughs> I still use Twitter. Um, I am a developer, so I am not including like Inst Instagram and other things on here, but you can set up um, web mention support for the rest of these tools as well. I'm wanting, at some point, I think it should happen on Dub.2. It just hasn't yet, because they have various APIs. They're just not like fully documented and released yet. So you can collect those uh, likes and replies and things like that. So I do that, especially since I'm very active on Twitter. And what does it look like when I log in? I guess I could log in, but we might not see anything active. I know it's a little bit small for y'all in the back. But um, you'll see a list of all the responses down here. And if you get a hit, it will say that it was sent, and it'll have the URL that it was sent to, which is kind of cool. I mean, most of it just runs in the background, and then you just collect it. So the, the process of setting up that web mention service is First, you sign up with Indie Auth. It's a little bit weird, because it's this whole, like, if you've not done anything in the Indie Web, it's this whole kind of ecosystem of stuff. So first, you set up Indie Auth so that you can log into these services with your domain, because it starts all with owning your own domain. And then you sign in on webmention.io to get your link tags. And you want to securely save that API key. And I um, personally do that with Netlify and the Netlify CLI. Uh, I will talk about how that all works in case you're curious. And you can sign up for a social media web mention service like Bridgie. But before we get started, I want to talk about Eleventy. So this is like a combo talk of like web mentions and Eleventy. Um, and so this is like on the road to Eleventy. If you don't know, the possum is the mascot for Eleventy. So that's why I have these duotone possums everywhere. It's a weird little animal that I kind of love. So, <laughs> I don't, has anyone actually been involved in the Eleventy community? I know there's a few in the back. Oh, and there's one person up here. Um, oh yeah, and Todd. Um, but uh, I feel like it's a super friendly community. <laughs> I'm probably biased because I started the Eleventy meetup as well. So we have a monthly meetup. It's all virtual. We can. So it's like the downside of the pandemic is that everything's virtual. But then the upside is if you have kind of like a niche topic, you can have a meetup that's focused solely on that. So you can actually go more in depth. So not every talk is an intro talk, kind of like this one. So I think that part is cool. But Eleventy itself is a node-based static site generator. And it is non-corporate and open source. He's, Zach Leatherman is the creator of it. And he's very adamant that... Um, he does not want funding, he's not interested in it, he's, he always wants it to be a community-based project. It requires no client-side JavaScript, so it's gonna be performant by default. We're not gonna have some huge bundle that's going down the wire. It is a folder-based API, and we're gonna see this in a second. I'll do a demo-like demo. -like demo. <laughs> I check out branches, so I don't actually have to write the code up here. But um, it's a folder-based API, and you can use a number of different templating engines like um, Markdown, Liquid, Nunjux, Pug, Handlebars. There's a lot of different flavors that it supports right out of the box. So let's get started and look at our demo. I have um, some first basic steps started up in this repo. And what I've done is I've installed Eleventy, that's just one dependency, at Eleventy slash Eleventy, and I set up two scripts. A start script, which is to run the build and serve it locally, and then I have a build script, so if I wanted to push and then build to serve on a static site service. 
And then the only other file I have here is my index.markdown, um, or MD. And so this is a markdown file, if you're familiar, and I just have an H1, which is yo 11 and uh, two paragraphs, this site rocks, and then we'll add a layout and some styles next. And so if I run um, npm start, we'll let that build, and um, <laughs> there's some funny stuff going on here because it's also reading my readme file. Um, it's automatically building everything that's in the root of my project and uh, putting it into this underscore site folder. And now we're going to go look at localhost 8080 and see the output. Oh, Gant, you're so loud. Um, so yay, we got a website. It's literally just an unstyled <laughs> H1 and two paragraphs. Ta-da! It's funny, like, it's so basic, but every generator or framework, <laughs> when I get to this page, I'm like, yes, this is just so cool. I don't know why. <laughs> just getting something out there. Or maybe it's all the folder file-based APIs. Like, Next.js really excited me, too, in the very beginning, which <laughs> is like the basic home page. But, you know, we, we do a bit more for websites, so um, let me check out the next step. I think... Uh, I forgot my branch names. Two, okay. GCO two. So we need some styles and some other things, right? Like, so I'm an organized kind of person. <laughs> I like putting all of my code in a source directory because I want the root of my project to be mostly config and other things. I don't uh, want my config mixed up with my source code. But that's me personally, you don't have to do this. So I, what I've done is I've moved this index.md here. I've added some other things, but you can ignore those right now. And then I've added this .11ejs, and that's my config file. So the things I've done here, this is like your base setup. So this dir, by default, your input is probably something else, but I like to call it source, SRC. Um, the includes folder is where we put layouts and things, and that by default is called underscore includes. If you have a data folder, it's underscore data by default, and the output is underscore site. And then you can change those to what you want them to be, but um, if you have this file, then you need to export them. And then pass through file copy is um, like just pass these through. And so I have this new style sheet that I've added, and I want it to just pass through. So 11e will automatically pass through markdown, uh, HTML, nunjucks, all those different file types, but your assets like CSS and images and things like that, you would have to um, add a line that says pass this through so that it goes to your build folder. So that's setting that up. If I look back at my index.md file, we can see that I've now added what's called YAML front matter, and this is a way to pass data around in 11D. Um, this says, uh, I want a field called title, and this is going to be the title of this page. And I want you to use this layout called layout.njk. And that layout is in this includes folder, and it's like all that other HTML. I didn't actually have this in the first version of the site that we just saw. So if I would have inspected that page, it would have been missing the head and the doc type and all of those different fields. But I can use a layout to now... Um, Close that one. Um, I can use a layout so I can get all these standard things. And now we can see I've used nunjux to add a few fancier things because this is not HTML, right? I have two curly brackets and this says dump the title inside of here. And this is a nunjux filter. And this says I want you to put my content here and um, mark it as safe content. Okay, I think that's all the things I did there, and I added my style sheet link here. And so if I run it again, npm start, I think I have some probably ridiculous styles in there. <laughs> it's like pink and purple. Um, so now I have style sheets, and it all still works the same, even though I've moved things around. So that's like, you know, a flavor of how you do some customizations and just like what the config can kind of generally look like. But let's take that one step further, because that's not really that interesting. Um, 11e sites, so there's a lot of 
blogs that use it. It's a static site generator, so it's great for static sites. So you can have like blogs or like a list of things. I'll show you another example. Um, I mean, I use it for my personal site, so I have, oops, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to go up to the top of the page. <laughs> So I have you know, different static pages, but then my blog also includes all of my blog posts and I kind of categorize them differently and it does tags man management really well. But also I have um, well, an RSS feed. It's really easy to add that in so you can automatically set up your RSS feed if people, you have subscribers. And then I also set up a newsletter um, using data. So let's take a look at how we would include or set up a blog. Control C, GCO3. All right. So now, if we take a look at our code, we can see that I've added this new folder called blog. And I have a welcome to my blog. So it's, it's still just a markdown file. <laughs> These are profound thoughts. Um, I have layout, title, and this new field called tags. Um, uh, I'm like, how deep do I want to go here? I'm not going to go too deep. <laughs> um, but we can actually, like, there's this thing called the data cascade. So it's like this data is more important than this data. So I could have, like, a default title set somewhere else, and then this one overrides it because it's the one closest to this particular page's data, which is really awesome. But then we can also have global data. And then tags are all automatically set up. Um, so if you set them, this page now has the blog tag. Uh, and I put it in the blog folder. There is a way to make everything in that blog folder have that tag. But then you can also do topic tags, um, which is what I do on my website. And I can definitely go in more detail on my website if anyone's curious at the end. Um, so here I have another one, and it has blog. If I go to my index page, I've now renamed it .njk, because that's a nunjux file. So I want to start doing some fancier things in here now. I, um, I actually could have done this still in Markdown and still included nunjux. It's weird how like things just will work automatically. But uh, I have best blog ever, some stuff, and then I have a loop. This is just a loop in nunjux, and I want you, this is so I can have like a little, um, a list of all my posts. And that's that's all the things I've done here so far. So if I go ahead and start that again, and I can go to bio. And now look, I, oh, I forgot I added a nav bar. Um, so I can go to each post, home, welcome to my blog, home. So yeah, ta-da, I have a blog. Um, you don't have to start from scratch, but I feel like to understand some of the concepts, it helps to at least get like a miniature demo. So I've actually written up this just mini demo as a tutorial, if you want to do that, as like a lighter introduction, because a lot of the intros can go pretty in depth. And then um, I do a separate one on web mentions, because web mentions are a little intense. But yeah, this is that post. <laughs> Itsiest bitsiest 11 tutorial. It's the one where the, the shouting possum <laughs> You always have to find the weird photos. There's a Twitter account called Possum Every Hour if you haven't checked it out yet. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's one for like every animal. <laughs> Insert animal name every hour. <laughs> there's going to be a Twitter account. All right, so you've gotten a flavor of um, Eleveny. Some of my favorite features are generating pages based on a set of data. So I do this on I have these game pages. So I am a board game nerd. And I made a website with all my board games because I forgot what I had. And also, I lived in this tiny space. And so they were all like tucked in weird places. I couldn't just have like a bookshelf so you could see them all. So I was like, this is my virtual game shelf. So we can figure out what to play. We can sort it by like, you know, if I only have three players that night, these are the games that <laughs> like do it. And this is all data from Board Game Arena. And if I, you know, click on one, here's Terraforming Mars. But I'm not writing this markup. I'm just. I'm literally pinging the board game API, board game geek API, and, um, and then uh, pulling that data in and generating my pages. So it's not like the, the blog that we saw, we had individual pages that represented the data, but this is literally just JSON, and now I've created a bunch of pages from it. Kind of like you would if you had like a CMS, which I also built the 11E Meetup website if you are interested in... Um, CMSs. 
11emeetup.dev. And this is, uh, we made our events and talks based, um, we're using Sanity. So if you want to see like an example of a 11e plus Sanity CMS website, since, you know, we have multiple organizers and managing that, I actually build a CMS. But it's really cool to build pages based on just data. And then you can have layouts within layouts and a bunch of template partials. So it's like getting more like old school web. Um, used to do Rails or just, I, I love it. Like I still use React and Preact on complex sites, but I like just doing this on the side and suddenly I'm happier because I got like, you know, just a little bit of CSS and I get to play with cool new things. Like if you don't already have your own developer blog or homepage, it doesn't even have to be a blog. Like get one just so you can experiment with like fun things. It's, I highly recommend it. Um, it's just your, what do you call it? People call it like their something playground or... Huh? Sand yeah, sandbox, but there's like another word, like their <laughs> their little digital garden. It's like <laughs> it's not like you're not building it for other people. You're building it for yourself because you like to. Um, but yeah, and then filters and short codes. Filters are <laughs> it's funny they're called filters, but they're really just functions. That's a nunjux word, but if you see the word filters, that just means functions and short codes. Filters are a nunjuck thing. Short codes are actually an 11 thing, and they work very similar to filters, so it's, a, it's another way, but it's kind of a nice way you can dump in miniature code. So I use that for my images. I use, like, Cloudinary images, and I'm a performance engineer, so, of course, I have, like, you know, the giant source set and sizes and all these attributes to make my images performant. So I use short codes for that. Um, and... All right, so we've talked about 11e. You've seen that there's a tutorial that I have on 11e, and then I have some suggestions. Like, if you still like it, you can check out these other articles and other things. Um, then I also have this in-depth tutorial of web mentions. So when I go through this, just try to, like, understand the general concepts because none of y'all are going to be live coding this, like, while I talk. That's not the idea of a talk. The idea of the talk is, like, hmm, am I interested enough in this to, like, actually maybe try it out? So figure that out while I talk. Um, so what is the process that I, that, like, if we sit back and, like, what's the architecture of the website and how it all works together? So in production, so on Netlify, not, like, locally. I don't want every time I build to pull new web mentions because I don't care. I'm just trying to publish a new blog post. But in production, I want to fetch a new web mention during the build, and I want to store them in a cache file. So this is, like, one different thing for Netlify because usually, I don't, how many of you have used Netlify before? Actually, not that many. It's kind of like GitHub pages. If you have more of you use GitHub pages. Yeah, yeah. But um, it can do fancier things, and it's still free. Um, and uh, so I want to store some files between builds, which doesn't always happen, right? And I want to, of course, render the web mentions <clears throat> or have them in the built pages. And I want to set up periodic builds because this is a static site, right? Like, every time they go to the site, I don't want it to ping an API. So I just set up like, like a fake cron job using GitHub Actions. So I'm going to show you how I do that too. It's funny. I usually get to that last slide and people are like, ooh. I'm like, it's not even <laughs> the point of the talk, but it's just so cool because we didn't really have that before. Or it's like you, you would use, um, it used to be a website service, but then they like shut it down or you couldn't do it for free anymore. But you can do it with GitHub Actions. <laughs> I was like, hello, hello, am I still there? <laughs> um, so we're going serverless. This is how I set it all up. I um, have these very fancy drawings that I did. <laughs> so I have my code on my laptop. These are the entities in play. The code on my laptop, we have GitHub, which of course is origin, and then we have Netlify. So when I push my code up to GitHub, to the main branch, um, when there are changes on the main branch. There's a hook in there that says, okay, go tell Netlify to do a build. And so Netlify will do a build and deploy, except that cache folder, because I have this cache folder plugin, that stays between builds. But everything else is just wiped out every build and rebuilt. Um, but the cache folder stays, which has my web mentions and some other stuff in there. I think maybe my newsletter. The other thing that happens is this GitHub action every four hours. Actually, I might have changed that because I was like, eh, I don't really get that many web mentions every four hours. <laughs> I made it more um, conservative. 
But uh, every four hours, you can go ahead and trigger another build and deploy, and that comes from GitHub, and it tells Netlify. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful on these is there are limits eventually on GitHub and Netlify, but I, I don't hit them, and um, my site's decently big now. <coughs> See, oh, I'm sorry, that was really loud. Um, but yeah. And then the last bit of this is that I store my environment variable for my web mention. Uh, remember, I was like, you get a key for the web mention API. I store that in Netlify. And when the build occurs, that's just a node. So it's basically like a server side action. So that environment variable is not ever on the client side. It's just used during build. And I can save that in Netlify, and then I can use the Netlify CLI. So on my command line, I usually use Netlify dev, which uses all the things that I've set up in my Netlify config to run on dev, which is really awesome, which will include pulling in environment variables. So if you haven't checked that out. So diving into the code, if you're interested, I'll just <laughs> mention on each page what's going in here. This is my, basically like my server side code, which is the stuff that happens just on build. Um, I want to fetch those new web mentions, so I hit that web mention API. I write it to the cache file, so using like node file uh, API stuff. And then I set up that cache plugin folder, which if you've used Netlify, a lot of times once you start getting a little bit more complex, you'll set up a Netlify TOML file. Which TOML is such a weird, Kind of like YAML, but worse. Um, <laughs> but um, so my, it, you know, it can contain your build command, like npm run build, it has plugins. It can do a lot of fun things though, even though it's a weird format. So I, I can set up redirects. I have redirects in my, <laughs> in my uh, blog because I had this, apparently this ancient blog post on Rails that still gets traffic and I don't understand why. It's just a description of the folder tree in Rails. <laughs> but apparently that is, still a popular post, so I had to redirect once I switched over my website because it kept getting 404s and I finally learned that from, uh, what is it? You sign up for Google Analytics, but there's a, the Search Console. Sign up for Search Console for your website. It's the Google Search Console, so you can also find out if like you're having weird issues on your site. And that was one of the ones I found. I was like, oh, people want this, apparently. Let me give it to them. I just had to change it. Um, so you can set up redirects and other fun stuff. And other cache headers, which is so much easier than in, like using AWS and CloudFront, S3 and CloudFront. Then I render my web mentions using filters, which remember are functions, um, with some handy filters, handy fil function filters. Um, rendering looks a little wild. <laughs> I gotta set, this is how you set, um, like variables, I guess you would call them. I don't know the official names in Nunjuck, so please forgive me if I say it wrong. But they're basically like variables. I'm saying like the web mentions equal this. Oh my God, filters look so weird in real life. So you say, um, <laughs> you put your first parameter first, and then you do a pipe, and then you, get, you give the filter name. And then if you have additional parameters, you list them, and <laughs> it's so weird. Like, why can't it just be you list your filter and then the parameters in order. But no, it's like first parameter, filter name, and then other parameters. Like, why? Um, anyways, it's kind of weird. So, you, you know, you set up all your things. This is just templating now. And then I want to actually, you know, do a loop and show those things in HTML. Render them. This part's not that interesting. <laughs> but here's your fake Netlify cron job with GitHub Actions. So yeah, you just you know go to something like cron tabs so you can figure out what the actual cron should be. Um, <laughs> I never know these things by default. I just look them up, and then um, you can say you know trigger the build hook, and so you put your Netlify build hook, and um, you probably know this, but in GitHub in the settings you can also put environment variables, so you can do your token there. Um, but yeah, that part's actually pretty fun, and. Ta-da, that's it. Um, that's my talk, did I do it too fast? I did, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for coming. These are actually the slides and the tutorial for web mentions, which is pretty in depth, like first understand 11E if you're gonna do this. Although concepts should work in other, like the concepts of web mentions will work in any 
thing you use, but I just wanted to give a flavor of a lemony as well. But yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, if you want to nerd down on stuff too, I can show you things. So feel free to ask questions or like, you know, how would you do that or whatever. I also have a form on my website, which I really like. This is why I like Netlify because, you know, being a lady person on the internet, you don't usually want to put your email out there. Um, so I have a form and forms are free on Netlify. So I don't have to have a server to manage this. I just actually, I can log into Netlify and show you if you're curious. Which, which one is it? app.netlify. So in the code, it just says something like netlify form equals true in my form markup, something like that. I probably said it wrong, so don't actually use that to build your site. But if I go to my co.code site in the forms area, you can see I have my contact form. It actually will automatically filter out spam, but I also have a honeypot, so you can set out a honeypot as well, so it will you know, ignore all the bots automatically and just have to look at the other things. Um, but yeah, you get like 100 responses for free each month, only 100 of the real ones. You don't get charged for the spam ones. So that's really cool. Um, there's a lot of things, and serverless functions, are, you can play with those too. It's a lot easier in Netlify than it is in AWS. They so use AWS Lambdas, behind the scenes for their serverless functions, but it's just like integrated easier here. But, yeah. questions or, yep? I was actually wondering if uh, web mention, the web mentions hosted service have any kind of abuse prevention? I don't know, like I've never looked at it because I only, I do it on build, I don't do it like live. So we can take a look, web mention. It probably is. Right? But all these like indie websites are like so basic like, like this. Well, they don't really. I feel like I'm, I see that right now the service is free. I imagine if this catches on. They'll, yeah, yeah. They'll have to find ways to deal with abuse. And to like rate limit it, yeah. Well, you do have to sign in with your domain. Like it only works. You can't like grab them from other domains. Like it doesn't work without your like API key. Oh, but what I meant is, if I if I wanted to post spam on your blog, right? Like the traditional way to do it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, like on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, you could totally do that. Of course, the stuff that comes from Twitter, like eventually Twitter would block it or whatever. Some people do add a step for like verifying before. I haven't had a problem yet, so I was like, I just wait till I actually have that problem. Because it would be a lot to like review every one of those, but um, like for example, the form at the bottom. Yeah, you could have some weird bot. <laughs> it used to be so loud. <laughs> you can't. Um, but I could also add a honeypot there to at least prevent, or like, you know, sort of prevent bots and add a little uh, serverless function. Serverless functions, I think you can get like 100,000 pings per month free or something like that on Netlify. There's a pricing page somewhere so you can see the details. <laughs> but yeah. What made you prefer um, 11T over other stacks I generate, like Hugo or Gatsby. Oh yeah, well, um, I do React, but I feel like for blogs, most of the time, like a full JavaScript framework, like client side is like, it's, I feel like it's overkill. Um, so, I mean, since I'm into performance, I'm like, I don't really need React to show you a bunch of headings and, and text. <laughs> um, I do think it's important for applications, you know, because it's hard, especially as a developer, but, um, yeah, I was like, no, I don't need Gatsby. I think at one time I was gonna do that. I used Gatsby to build some other site and then eventually I switched it over to 11E because I think it's just, I'd rather have zero JavaScript on the front end and then um, I do have a little bit of vanilla JavaScript right now. It's mostly for analytics. So I add um, Core Web Vitals stuff. So I wanna get like specific for every, um, actually I can show you what that looks like too if y'all have never seen it. Sorry, I'm gonna nerd out on the <laughs> performance too. But um it's really cool because I have this Web Vitals report and um, if you add this JavaScript library and some a little bit of custom code, you can get your 
Core Web Vitals data, um, I hooked it up to Google Analytics. So this report works with that. But um, I can see my largest contentful paint, um, and like in the median is around here, which is pretty fast, and over time, and also by page. So I can also see in India that my LCP is slower. So this is probably due to like time to first byte, like maybe Netlify doesn't have like a good um, edge point, what do you call them? <laughs> CDN edge cache location um, close enough to there. Or maybe just like, I know there's more feature phones, so maybe the devices, you know, can't handle it. Although the bulk of my traffic is on desktop, not mobile. Because it's a, it's a tech blog, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm like, you just don't need JavaScript for stuff that's just, you know, <laughs> it's a blog. <laughs> um, and then 11D itself, I used to have Jekyll a long time ago, and I was a Ruby slash Rails dev, and I just, I just didn't write stuff. I don't know, I had to look things up every time, and 11D was easier, plus, I don't know, the community, communities do help. It's a friendly community, there's a Discord too, and it's super, people are very helpful there, like if you're struggling with something, you ask a question and someone's gonna answer. Um, but yeah, I like that aspect of it. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's mostly it. <laughs> It wasn't like all the cool kids. It might have been like, you know, the slightly nerdier cool kids are playing with it. <laughs> I do like Next.js when I build like a React application from scratch. Although I prefer reaching for Preact first because it's lighter. And so I do some mini projects in Preact. Any other questions? I'm trying not to go off topic too much like I did. <laughs> I, uh, my talks, so on my um, blog, well, actually on my homepage too, I have you know, upcoming talks and workshops. This is through global data. Um, so each talk, title, where it's at. Um, I just have a JSON file that I update when I have a new talk, and I just render that with using global data, which is fun. So yeah, fun times. RSS is like literally a you add a plugin and a few lines of code. You can, there's a lot of starters. I actually originally started with the 11D base blog starter, and then I customized from there, but then I didn't learn a lot of the concepts because I never did a tutorial. <laughs> I just learned by fire. Um, but yeah. Like many others, I'm thinking about redesigning my blog. You know, like everyone's always thinking about redesigning their blog. <laughs> I like the idea of what's what's the new fun place or like not fun but like you know the cool kids are hanging out on. What is it called? Poly. What is it? Poly what? Is it? Poly work. Yeah. And I'm like I like the idea of categorizing things that way. So I want to like I'm trying to think of a way to like it's not just my blog anymore because I also you know occasionally have videos. So I'm like maybe I reorganize this as like you know my poly work but not with that word. And it's like I can label it as like an article or a um, podcast or you know a video, and it's kind of sorted that way, but still by topic. So it's like maybe like format and topic. So that's kind of my that's actually more what I want to do here is like think about how I redo that, because right now it's just by blog and and then also newsletter. But like I could just combine that all and be like my work and or something. That sounds pretentious though. So my content, what would you call that? It's not very exciting. <laughs> Why would you keep separate sections for podcasts, talks, and... I don't know. I mean, because I think you could just filter by that, you know? I was thinking of adding also Algolia for search on here, so if you wanted to, like, search things. Search would be something that maybe I would build. I wouldn't, because it's just one tool. It's actually kind of fun to do stuff in vanilla JavaScript if you haven't done it in a while. It's challenging because you have to think differently than when you thought in components if you're using, like, you know, React or Angular or Vue. But, um... It might be kind of fun to think of a, you know, so it doesn't refresh the page every time you do a search. But you could do that in vanilla. Um, yeah, fun times. Well, thanks, y'all. Feel free to hang around and ask more questions if you like. <laughs>